Hi, it's so nice to see uh, such a nice group from all over the country with us this evening for our uh, Mara uh, virtual open house. So welcome. Uh, we have a brief agenda, but uh, a lot to share with you. So an introduction to the iSchool and to Mara, the program. Uh, an overview of that degree, uh, which uh, stands for Archives and Records Administration. Uh, and then we'll talk about what it's like to be an online student. And uh, one of our students should be joining us shortly. And then we'll have a, a Q&A session if you have questions. So uh, I'm at the top there, the program administrator, uh, Dr. Franks, uh, Pat Franks, just call me Pat. And uh, down below me is our director who has just left but is still hanging in there until we find our, her replacement. Uh, she really has a promotion, uh, so she is the new associate dean for the uh, college that we're in. Uh, and then Dr. Main is below her and she's handling everything until we get a new replacement in uh, place. But uh, she is the uh, coordinator for admissions, uh, graduate advising. Uh, she's the interim director and she really does so much for us. And then down below is Sheila Gertrude. And if you ask me questions, send me a note. And I don't know the answer. I'm sending that along to Sheila. So if you join us, you'll be hearing from her quite a bit. She's the online student advisor and she advises mostly on the uh, administrative questions that you might have, such as how do I register for that class, I need a permission number, uh, things like that. And then uh, you'll be hearing from Lisa in a minute, so I'm going to wait to ask her to introduce herself. But uh, Dr. Lisa Dalvey is with us, uh, and then uh, she teaches one of the courses you would take in the fall if you joined us. Uh, Jason Kaltenbacher teaches the other. Uh, we recommend two. Those are the two people who teach the first two courses. And then if you decide you want to take three courses, Joshua Zimmerman uh, teaches a research methods for information professionals. That's fantastic. You normally would get it later in your program, but if you're trying to hurry through the program, that's the other course we recommend. And then Kenna, I don't know, Kenna, if you're on, you could open your mic and say hi, but she should be here shortly. Uh, Kenna is our uh, graduate assistant. She does a lot of work for us, and she just sent me a uh, preview of a graduation video that she had worked on trying to get our MAR grads to participate as well as the MLS grads, and really came out very well. It'll be shown at the end of our uh, online graduation ceremony. So we'll hear from uh, Kenna when she hops in. And then I'm going to turn this right over now to Lisa. And I don't know, Lisa, if you want me just to hit the slides for you, if you want to take control. I think I'll just say next slide, if that's OK. That's fine. And I'll <laughs> next slide. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I think I'll just start by just, just saying hello before I get into the benchmarks and just welcome to the open house. I'm very excited to be speaking to you all today. I actually am speaking to you from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, where I live. I have been teaching the MAR program since 2009, uh, which means that I've had this awesome opportunity to work with all of the students uh, in the MAR program so far. I teach a, a few courses in the, in, in the program, and we can talk about that a little later. Again, welcome, um, and I'm happy to answer any questions during the session, and if you think of anything later, please don't hesitate to contact me, and my information will uh, be uh, included at the end of this presentation, so welcome, everyone. So I just thought we'd talk a little bit about uh, the foundations of the MAR program. The original framework and benchmarks for the program were developed from uh, some really foundational, important uh, uh, competencies from uh, our, our, our professional associations and certification boards. So the uh, ARMA core competencies, which is our professional association, the Society of American Archivists, uh, guidelines for graduate in archival education. Also, much of the class content is much uh, very based on the, these very important three industry uh, standards, which I'm going to talk about a little bit uh, in the next slide. 
But I, what I think about it, it was great about this program is by completing many of the core courses, it really prepares you to take uh, certifications in those exams. But uh, before I but before I talk about that, I just want to say that the the framework for the program is very much based on industry standards. Uh, from our professional associations and from our certification boards. Next slide. This is exciting for a new opportunity for uh, the MARA program is that when you complete uh, many of the foundational core competent uh, core core courses upon graduation, at the end of, of your program, uh, in recognition of the content of the MARA courses, MARA grads are, are if you choose to take this route, uh, can be recognized as a certified records analyst or a certified records manager from the uh, a sort of Institute of Certified Records Managers. And you'll see both Pat and I have those certifications. And they're very important certifications if you want to work in the field of uh, records and information management or information governance. And so what happens is you'll take these uh, upon graduation, you will automatically qualify for the first, it's a five courses, uh, sorry, five, five exams. And if you want to be a certified records analyst, you will, you, you'll be in that good standing. And if you want to be a certified records manager, you just have to take one additional exam and you will be certified. Uh, even even uh, with, there's a requirement to have one year work experience. So if you plan that right, and you take an archival internship or a records management internship within the program, which we offer, you will meet all of these certifications. And I just think this is a really great, uh, Dr. Franks worked with the Institute of Certified Records Managers to set this up. And I just think it's a really awesome thing that, uh, uh, that it's a really awesome opportunity for students. You know, I, I took these exams a few years ago uh, and it, it was costly and I, and I had to go through all of the exams. So, you know, if I was a student, I would really uh, love to use this as an opportunity uh, as part of my graduation to be certified. So thank you. Next slide. In addition to those uh, traditionally more records management certifications, the Academy of Certified Archivists, for those who are here thinking that they want to be more on the archive side, as opposed to the records and information management side, has also uh, reviewed all of uh, and approved all of our, uh, you know, core MAR courses. And, and, and they have seen them as meeting the educational component for students seeking to take the 100 question examination to become a certified records archivist. So again, our, our courses and our program really do prepare you for uh, after graduation, if you do choose to take certifications beyond your, your master's degree, we put you in a very good light in that manner. Next slide. So the MARA program has 10 overarching core, core uh, competencies. Um, uh, these form the objectives of the program and our commitment to you. No, many of these program core comps match directly to competencies in each and in all of your courses and to each of your assignments actually. Uh, I, I don't wanna you know, read them all to you, but this is our commitment to you. Upon graduation, you will meet these criteria in terms of ethics and social, cultural and economic dimensions of record keeping and understanding the evolution of information in record keeping systems. Again, I don't wanna read them all to you. Um, and they're on, they're on our website, but this is our commitment to you. Upon graduation, you will have uh, competencies in all of these areas, and this is really the foundation of, 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 of the program. Why this is so important, and they're, why we're probably showing this to you today, is that 
uh, at the end of the program, you will need to look back and demonstrate your knowledge in each of these course areas and these core competencies in what we call an e-portfolio. So I think that's our next slide. Oh, before, no, it's not our next slide, but I, I will be getting to the e-portfolio. So remember those, those core competencies. But this is a, just a really, this is probably foundational of what you want to know today, is that students are required to take uh, 14 courses, 10 of which are required, uh, four of which were electives. And I'll say a little bit more about those electives at a later time. But um, as Dr. France mentioned, when you enter the program, you'll get the kind of the foundational courses, which are the intro courses, which I, you see at the very top, like 200 and 204, which are sort of the intro courses that will get you, you know, foundational, whether you are, have been working in the field for many, many years, or whether you're um, kind of new right out of your bachelor program, it doesn't matter, we start everyone from scratch. Then we kind of move into 210, 211, 249 type courses, which what I call the, the life cycle management courses where we understand about after we get a great foundation, we, we understand, uh, we, we start to learn about, uh, you know, record creation, appraisal, um, information storage and retrieval. Um, I teach a very technical course on digital data, and so does Dr. Franks teach a very uh, technical course, almost very lab-like on content management and digital, digital preservation, which is heavily focused on really hands-on experience in working with uh, SharePoint and Preservica. Uh, uh, and then as you move more into your senior years, we go into the sort of uh, senior uh, seminar type courses. And we have two really awesome courses on information governance and information assurance and security, which are absolutely super cool hot topics in our industry now, right now. And uh, our advisory boards, which I'll talk about in a minute, also have you know recommended that these are the two hot topics in our area, in our program, sorry, in our field. And we're actually teaching them right now. And then you'll close out uh, by, or start by teaching uh, research methods. You can take that with, with, at any point in the program, but that's really a foundational course that allows you to be able to uh, understand how we conduct research in our, in our field, which, which is great. And we conclude the program with our capstone pro project, which is called an e-portfolio. Uh, uh, and I'll, I'll just say a little bit more about that in the next slide. Great, thanks. So within the MARA course curriculum, students will be required to take what is called an e-portfolio class. It means electronic portfolio. Um, and generally, it's in absolutely the last term of your program. This is what we call kind of a capstone project or culminating experience. It's a self reflection exercise that allows you to demonstrate your learning and what you have uh, learned all within the program. So students are required to demonstrate knowledge in those 10 core competencies I showed you on a previous slide. And for each of those core competencies, students are required to demonstrate what they understand the comp to mean. They are, are to provide evidence that they meet these requirements. Generally, they have to submit two or three course assignments um, or products that they worked on, and we're very flexible about, you know, what that looks like. Uh, um, but you know, what I love about this capstone project is like creating an e-portfolio is just an excellent way to complete the program and showcase your work and reflect on your accomplishments. I have had students tell me that their e-portfolio helped them get their first job or that promotion. And what is great is that you can kind of turn this e-portfolio easily and turn, and turn it into more of a professional portfolio that kind of links to your resume. So I think it's a really awesome way of ending the program. Next slide.
So this is uh, one example of that students may select to complete their program. So students entering the program often enter in the fall or the spring, and it generally, if they follow this kind of program, uh, and, and for the fall, it would be uh, MARA 200 and 204. If you take two courses uh, a, a term, and maybe one course in the summer, which is, I don't know, I call it the happy path, but it's not, it's, that's just what this is, you know, demonstrating, you would complete the program in three years. And that, this is a really helpful guide and would demonstrate that because uh, MARA courses are only offered once in a, once a semester. But, you know, that is not, you don't have to follow this path. I've had, we have had students, you know, double up and take maybe three courses a term and then two courses in the summer and really go through this and, and complete the program in two years, which is great. Or we've had students on, you know, they have an, a different path and they take one course here and there, uh, but just steadily taking one course uh, per term and taking maybe five to six years to c complete the program. We, we, we kind of term out at seven, but what students love about this program, according to their access surveys, is the flexibility of the program. Again, you can finish anywhere from two to seven years and you can take a term off if required, just one term off. Um, you know, we get it, family commitments and, 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 and things. Uh, and you are not alone when picking this rotation. This is just one rotation uh, that Dr. Franks has, has devised. But as Dr. Frank is your faculty advisor, um, will help you uh, pick your own path. And so it might be a two-year path, or it might be a three-year path, or it might be four or five-year path. But again, you're not alone, but you will have a path similar to this. Next slide. Mm -hmm. In order to allow students the opportunity to customize their program based on their own interests, students can select um, four additional electives from those required courses I, sure, I, I showed you on an earlier slide from the uh, MLIS or the Master or Library Science Program uh, during the course of this program. As you can see from this extensive listing. There are some really awesome courses, <laughs> in cor including, okay, you just added a new one, uh, My SQL in Depth. Wow, fantastic. I wish I could take that. Uh, in Digital Curation, Privacy, Project Management, Web 2.0. I often say that I wish I was a student again so that I had the opportunity to take some of these really cutting edge uh, courses uh, and relevant courses. This literal, this listing was reviewed and approved by the Armara Advisory Committee. And so I just, uh, our Mara Advisory Committee is a group who advises uh, Dr. Franks and the program. Uh, it's made up of industry professional experts in the field. And then, and so we really do need to them to, you know, opine on this listing uh, along with other things but they ensure that the electives provide you with like real skills you need for success in the profession and I think the electives are just like an excellent educational component to those core uh, MARA courses that uh, you saw on a me talk to on an earlier slide. Next. This is also a really great um, opportunity. Within the MARA program, students can take advanced certificates to complement and enhance their degree. So within SJSU and I, the iSchool, generally we have three. One is on digital asset management, another on information governance, assurance and security, and the third is on data analytics, data-driven de decision-making. 
And if you choose your electives carefully, strategically, uh, with, with, with our help, you can also graduate with your master's degree, but also with an advanced certificate in these areas, which I think will just look super awesome and, and cool on your resume. And what most uh, Mara students take, next slide. I'm probably the, easy, the easiest one to, uh, with very little effort <laughs> to take is if they absolutely choose their courses right, um, they can get without with very little work because they're already required to take uh, to take some, some of these courses. They can get uh, an information governance assurance uh, digital asset certificate. And they're already required to take. We are already required as uh, Mara students are required to take, you know, the Mara courses. But if you just, as an example, just took this one extra course at the bottom, information security as an elective. Uh, by just taking that one course as an elective, you would, by default, get this advanced cer certification. So uh, it's just important, and it? it's just like a an awesome add-on to complement your master's degree. So next part, I think we'll turn it over to you. I think this is fine. All right. Um, so uh, we mentioned the courses that you would take. Uh, that uh, are offered through the MLAS program, but you can also take MARA uh, short courses as electives as well. And we have some pretty neat ones. We offer those uh, in the summer, fall, and spring. And uh, you would add your one and two credit courses up to equal a three credit MLAS course if you wish to do that. This summer we have one in ethics, one in blockchain, uh, leases in health information uh, management, and I'm thinking we have another one to help prepare for the job market for our grads. So uh, we've got other options. And the MLS program has one and two credit courses as well that you can select from. So you have a lot to think about. But uh, what I wanted to do is just show you the specific courses if you joined us for the fall. And you can still enroll until the end of this month, so you still have time to do that for the fall uh, if you apply by the end of the month. Uh, one of them is Lisa's course that she mentioned, Records, Records and Information Management Professions. This is the uh, first course that you should take if you are in the program and only taking one course. Uh, they're all ACA pre-approved, all of our required courses, so you don't have to worry about that. But the description explains that this is our writing course, so it's really important for that. It's also the course in which we take a look at the students enrolled and offer you a one-year paid membership in uh, one of three different uh, professional associations, ACES, NAGARA, or SAA. ARMA is not on that list because they don't have an agreement with us uh, for the um, a cost the other associations do uh, and so at least you'll be able to uh, join one of those three uh, professional associations for free for a year see if you like them uh, the other course is with Jason Kaltenbacher he is also the uh, coordinator for the informatics program a new program that we have a new degree uh, that concentrates uh, specifically in cybersecurity or health information um, management and uh, uh, but he's been with us also since almost the beginning of the program he teaches one course each fall and spring uh, this one is our management oriented course management of archives records and information governance programs and uh, you'd really enjoy his courses as well the third course that I mentioned, if you decide to take three courses because you don't want to follow that uh, average uh, timeline that we have there where we recommend two courses each fall, spring, one in the summer for two summers to get out in less than three years. If you prefer to accelerate your program, you want to take the extra MAR courses when you can because they're only offered, as Lisa said, once a year. So uh, this records uh, management um, research methods course is only offered every fall. Uh, but uh, Josh's, uh, Josh's course is uh, unique in that it's not the traditional additional uh, research methods course. It is applied to practical use of the uh, data that you gather uh, when you're conducting research. So this would be our third uh, recommendation. 
Uh, this is an example of my course, uh, just a module. I wanted to explain that all of us use a course uh, learning management system. It's Canvas. Within there, we put all of the modules for the semester. So usually it ends up to be 15 weeks, 15 mods. Uh, the modules for the week contain all of the work that you would do for that week. So lectures, links to videos, reading assignments, uh, projects, uh, whatever it may be. Uh, on the screen, what you see there is my second week this semester uh, where students were being introduced to enterprise content management and also being brought into our uh, SharePoint uh, uh, environment so that they could work within SharePoint the first half of the course. And they got right into creating a site right away and declaring a record within SharePoint. So that's all in just one week. Uh, some assignments like your midterm will be uh, explained to you at the beginning of the course and you'll have seven weeks to work on it uh, at your own pace. Some of them will be assigned right that Monday and you're going to have to have them in by Sunday night. That's my schedule. I start on Monday and on Sunday night for my courses some instructors will be a little different. They may decide to start on Tuesday or start on Saturday. Uh, it's always up to the instructor. So unfortunately, you have to uh, be able to accommodate the instructor schedule there. So you do a lot of planning uh, to figure out when your assignments are, are due. Uh, I'm going to turn this over now, though, to Kenna, and I saw that Kenna hopped in here. I told them you would, Kenna, and I explained that you sent me a link to a terrific video. I did watch it, uh, and uh, it came out really well for all of the work that you said was involved. So uh, I'll let you go, and I'll turn the slides for you whenever you're ready to move to the next one. Awesome, perfect. You can flip to the first one. Uh, hi guys, I'm Kenna. Um, I'm Pat's student assistant, and this is my third and final year in the MARA program. So I'm actually just finishing up my last two semesters, which is really exciting for me. Um, so I'll just start off and uh, before I get into what's on our slides and just say um, that our program is really great. It's I've learned so much, and if you guys um, want to reach out to me for anything. Uh, I'm here, happy to talk to you, happy to tell you about my experience. Um, I work full-time and I work part-time for Pat um, and I do classes full-time as well. So if you guys need any information on juggling schedules in life, um, definitely reach out and I'm happy to answer. Um, okay, so this is our, um, what you see here is our uh, blogs. These are the blogs for the iSchool. Uh, we have the, the iSchool in San Jose has uh, quite a few blogs actually uh, with varying information to help you uh, through your time in the program. Um, the first blog is the iSchool Curriculum Center. Um, this blog is managed by Dr. Main, um, contains information such as courses offered, when the classes are canceled, and other important registration news updates. Um, it's been helpful um, just for any announcements to get through. Uh, and the second blog is the iSchool blog. Um, it provides a little more specific information, um, resources, useful advice, including posts about MLIS and MARA, um, the program updates, career pathways, online learning, tips for time management, student groups, et cetera, et cetera. Um, next slide. And then this is our Mara blog, um, which I update, and uh, it keeps you up to date with what's happening in the profession, the Mara community. We've had um, a lot of spotlights recently, um, which has been nice, and um, you know, it could talk about anything from current news um, to what's going on in our program or anything like that. So um, it highlights current students and alumni and shares their experiences with you. Um, you can see in April uh, was RIM month, Records and Information Management month, and we did an interview with Nick Inglis, um, who's the Executive Director of Content and Programming Management at ARMA International, um, and that was a really cool interview for me to be able to do um, and talk to him, and he's been a great resource for us as well. Next slide. Okay, so this is our Facebook page, one of our main forms of social media. Um, it's a great reference for job announcements. Uh, we post a lot of scholarship opportunities on there. Um, articles, posts related to archives and records and info governance. Um, it's a great place to interact with fellow students and alumni. You have to ask for approval 
um, to participate, but once you're approved, you can begin sharing posts and your thoughts. Um, and it's just SJSU Mara. Um, if you wanted to look us up on Facebook and join, we'd be happy to have you. Next slide. Okay, so these are webinars. Um, we have two, um, two a semester, and um, they're presented to us uh, usually via Zoom. The webinar focuses on people in the field, such as um, uh, the first one you see here um, is from um, the Capuchin Archives in Detroit um, with one of our alumni, um, Junia, and she was able to tell us all about her experience after graduating, which um, as somebody who is going to soon be a graduate um, was super cool to learn about. Um, and she told us all about how her um, school experience um, really helped her in her current job. And she started um, her archives kind of from the ground up. Uh, she had to do a lot of organizing um, and putting together collections and things like that. And that was really cool to learn about. Um, so if you're interested, you can always look at, for announcements on our Facebook page. Um, emails come out. Um, but they're really great to um, participate in and to view, especially if there's something that kind of piques your interest um, career-wise, they're great. Um, and we always uh, announce them and try and push them out as well and usually have a pretty good turnout. Next slide. Cool, so this is um, Vacara. What you see here is our virtual center um, for Archives and Records Administration. And it's a MARA created space and community based in the virtual world of Second Life. Uh, it's a virtual world that we host virtual world events, um, offer resources through annual Vicara conferences, events and exhibits. We hosted um, a bit ago our 10th anniversary conference and then um, we hosted the panel presentation um, for the VWVPE conference, which is really cool. Um, it's a great space. You can interact with other students there as well. Um, and you can see uh, some of the people in there. You can see Pat's avatar. It's really fun to uh, get in there and kind of create um, who you are and your person and just kind of explore around and see there's a lot, a lot to look at and a lot to learn from there. Next slide, please. I think the next slide is mine. Oh. So I, I'm just going to hang on to this one for a minute because I wanted to uh, point out that uh, we took a year off from our annual conference in order to explore virtual reality and augmented reality. Uh, and so we now have uh, homes not only in Second Life, but in Kitely, which is also another virtual world. But in addition, we've been making homes in virtual reality spaces like Altspace and uh, Mozilla Hubs. Uh, and uh, we've been trying to find uh, platforms that might be uh, helpful for training and education. Uh, and uh, we found some that are being used right now for businesses to train uh, their employees. Uh, we're all a little uh, zoomed out at this point, right? <laughs> we're all uh, using uh, the web conferencing, so looking for the next interesting thing, and some businesses are moving toward the virtual reality space for that. So uh, if anybody's interested in joining me in this, uh, you've got to make it known to me right away, and I'll drag you along with us. Uh, uh, it's one of my uh, hobbies. But uh, serious side here, uh, all I wanted to mention uh, is that uh, you can keep track of some of the uh, uh, salaries that uh, are uh, estimated for people in our profession. This is for a records manager. They have others, of course, uh, at salary.com. And uh, for this year, it's, it's looking fairly good. Uh, as with everything you know, it always depends on your education, years of experience, and things like that. That's why it's also so important to position yourself with certification in addition to the degree, if you can do that. Uh, that gives you a little bit of an edge 
people ask me if, if you know, it's important to take in, and you'll be thinking about this too, the MLAS program we do offer in Archives and Records Career Pathway. You can take courses that are similar to these within the MLIS, and that would prepare you to work in a library. So that's the distinction. Our MARA program is Archives, Records, Information Governance, Information Assurance. We don't want to have anything to do with the library. I shouldn't say that, but as far as being accredited. So I often get questions uh, from a prospective students, well, why aren't you ALA accredited? Well, because that means American Library Association, and we don't offer library prep courses. Uh, so uh, what we look to is our students being able to prove that they are worthy of certification individually, that they can master that by helping them get that CRA or CRM exam, preparing them for the uh, CA, the Certified Archivist exam, preparing them for information governance professional exams. So uh, that's where there's a little bit of a distinction. So uh, why um, SJSU and MARA? Well, this is feedback from students, uh, and they tell us that they look to us for the quality program, uh, the technology, the faculty, but most of all for the experience with other students. We pride ourselves on being a community of learners where we all help each other succeed. So you're, when you join us, you're not in competition with anybody else. You're in a team, a large one that sometimes breaks into team projects, smaller groups. Kenna was just in one. Uh, and in fact, she was in the one I was talking about, Kenna. I don't think you were on yet where I was talking about the foodie. Uh, um, oh, yeah, that was us. Oh, it was awesome, that one. Yeah, the repository. Uh, so anyway, students like Kenna, uh, you learn from and uh, get supported by. Uh, and I think all of our experiences, whether working or not working in this field, uh, bring something new and fresh to uh, every class that you take. Uh, but also we offer opportunities to learn from experts through our MAR guest lecture series. Uh, you just saw two this spring that uh, were archives related, uh, but we're putting a third one in on May 27th, if you have time. Uh, it's on a blockchain. It's a blockchain panel with four of us on it. Uh, that should be really pretty interesting. And if you uh, decide to take an extra course before you start with us in the fall and happen to register for my two credit blockchain, course uh, that would fit right in because that recording of that session on May 27th is how we're going to start out that course. So uh, pretty neat uh, opportunities in the fall. I was just talking to somebody who wants to do another uh, session for us on uh, records for uh, zoos. We've had one before that was amazing on uh, sea life and uh, now we're looking at one that's going to uh, take a look at the kinds of records that are created uh, and maintained uh, for zoos. So uh, a, a lot of opportunity to learn from all kinds of people. Uh, the cost, I think this is one of the, the most important things too. Uh, I did have one student say, I came to you because of the cost. There were two programs that I was interested in and yours was the lower cost one, but she also added, and I am so glad that I selected it because it really worked out the way I was hoping it would. So we try to maintain an even keel within the, the, I guess within that realm of, of what you might charge. So we're not the highest, we're not the lowest, we're kind of in the middle. Uh, but uh, you certainly get your uh, money's worth for your courses, I think. Well, especially depending on what you put into it, right? So if you really are excited about uh, being in records management, archives, information governance, and you get into a program like this and put your all into it, you're going to get so much back out of it as well. Uh, so um, there are some uh, grants available. Uh, registering now for fall, you're a little too late to do that. If you were thinking about registering or applying for next spring, you would want to be able to apply for uh, incoming students early. Uh, but uh, we also have other grants. Uh, Dr. Dalby works on the uh, scholarship committee for that. 
but our school likes to also tout some of the other things that I don't normally talk about, like networking opportunities, travel grants, if you're in one of the uh, associations of student groups uh, and you're invited to speak or do a poster at a conference, our school will give you a stipend to do that. Uh, so there are many other ways that we support uh, our students. And the application process, the application process is uh, very simple. However, um, you will see that we do require a 3.0 GPA minimum. And we don't control that, that's set. The university does all of our processing of applications. We in our high school don't even see them until after you're approved. So if you don't have a 3.0, it, they look at first your overall GPA, if that is a 3.0, they look at your last 60 units of credit. If that's a 3.0, you're still uh, asked to join us, you're still approved. Uh, but if it's not, then uh, of course you would get this letter saying, you know, sorry, you don't meet that qualification. However, you're not alone in that if that happens to you because uh, we have on our website instructions for what to happen if, if that's uh, your situation. What you would do is take a course somewhere else at another institution, but it has to be accredited and uh, raise your GPA to that 3.0 and then you would be able to apply and be accepted. Uh, uh, if you have another master's degree, and you'd be surprised at how many students we get that already have a master's degree and are just coming for a second one. Uh, that is an automatic acceptance because when you graduate from a master's degree, it is assumed you have at least a 3.0 average. So you would not be able to graduate. So you can apply online right now. Uh, it says it closes June 1st, but I get the applications in before the end of May if you plan to do that. Uh, and then you have to get all of your documents in by the end of, uh, well, June 20th, actually. Uh, if you're in college now and you're not graduating until the end of the semester, you can apply now and then you would be accepted uh, conditionally. You would still be able to start your classes. They would wait and see what your transcript is. So you'd still be able to get into your classes for the fall, but you may not proceed after that if your transcript is not presented or if you have not finished that program. So uh, don't let the fact that you're still in class uh, keep you from applying if you'd like to do that. All right, I mentioned our summer classes. I just want to mention them again. We have something called open classes. So you could even take a three credit elective from the MLS program if you wanted to. Uh, you're um, allowed to take courses in open classes and then apply them to your program. Uh, so if you're thinking about something to do for the summer, I've only listed the MAR courses here because I think they're so much fun. And I wanted you to see the actual names because it's hard for re me to remember those long names. But those are the ones that are available to you this summer. And they have, you could see different start and end dates. <laughs> Uh, so for more information, uh, you're going to be able to contact me, of course, but I have all three of us here. Uh, if you want to talk off the record as far as what's it really like to be a student, uh, contact Kenna because she'll tell you like it is. <laughs> she, she doesn't hold back. Uh, and then if you're interested in Dr. Dalby's course for fall, if you want to learn a little more about internship possibilities, she supervises that, uh, you want to get in touch with Dr. Dalby and then uh, I can help you with anything else that, that you have questions on. So now I'm just going to stop talking and ask if any of you have any questions. And if you do, just just unmute yourself and go ahead and ask. Any comments? <laughs> Actually, yes, um, my name is Jennifer Peterson. Hi, I'm curious Hi. about your, um, your certificates. I saw you had one in digital curation. Would you be able to tell me anything about that? Well, what, uh, what it is, uh, there is a three credit certificate that you're eligible to ask for after you finish the MARA program. And uh, that is, I'm going to see if I could get back to that. Uh, that has just three options. It's only one certificate, but three uh -huh. pathways, if you will. So what you would do is choose the pathway that you would want. And this is the one right here. So this is not a digital curation. Um, 
certificate, what it is uh, up at the top outside of that box, it's a uh, advanced certificate in strategic management of digital assets and services. So we call it a digital assets certificate. Mm -hmm. And then if you decide you want to do that, you look at those three options, you can only pick one right? Because the name of the certificate is the same for all of these. It's your focus. It's different. So if the digital asset management one is the one that you would be allowed to take your digital curation course, or there's a tools and services one that's in there. There are a few other courses in there that relate right to digital content or asset management. So that's, that's a pretty neat one. You have four uh, three credit courses that you can take as electives and you only need three for that pathway. So with the right planning, you'd be able to get that one very easily. And when you finish the MAR program, you know you're going to graduate, then you're allowed to send a request to the office and state, check my transcript, I finished these courses, I am also uh, supposed to receive a certificate. Does that answer your question? Um, sort of, yeah. If um, So you need to complete the MARA program first, so say... Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. a catch. Yep. Okay. Yep. <laughs> we do have we do have a five credit uh, certificate program, and I forgot the, the actual name of it. Uh, a five course, I should say. But okay. if you look under all of our offerings, you'll see that we have three degrees, and we have that certificate program. It's a post master certificate program, though. Uh -huh. So you actually right. Right. Uh, would have your master's and then you'd say, I want to come back for a refresher. I have some right. gaps to fill in. I'm going to pick five courses. Uh, and then I think I'm going to be uh, better prepared for whatever my goal is. So there's, that's a good option too. Great. Great. Thank you. Okay. All right. Anyone else? Good evening, Dr. Frank. Hello. Hello. I can hear you. How are you? Hi. I am good. It's Roxanne Rollox from Trinidad. Oh, Roxanne. Very good. How are you? I'm just fine, and I'm glad you're calling in from Trinidad. So how is the weather there, okay? Yes, it's great. <laughs> I knew it. I, I did have, I do have, sorry, questions, and I sent it in an email because it will be too much to discuss in this short time. Okay. I'm All right. Um. Yeah, um, because of the COVID pandemic in Trinidad and Tobago, we have a lot of restrictions. Um, our schools and the educational institutions are closed. So I outlined it in the email and we can always discuss further. So I am having some setbacks in getting information to start this whole process, but we, we can talk further. Very good. Okay, so I will look for uh, um, it's uh, what nine eighteen here in the evening, and I've been on since morning. So I yeah. will look for your email in the morning. If that's okay, and yeah, then I will okay. answer all of your questions. And if you'd like, you and I could set up a Zoom meeting so we could just talk together. Uh, that would be happy. great. Yeah, I'd be happy to do that. And then we could go over everything. We also have restrictions and many of our yes. uh, schools are closed as well. And yes. uh, we were fine with our MAR program because we've always been online, but the other programs on our campus had to quickly figure out how to teach online. <laughs> and it's not, it's not been easy. <laughs> yes. It's been a challenge for them. Yeah, so I understand yes. what you're saying. So yes. I will look for your email and watch for my response tomorrow. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Hi, this is Jenny in Boston. I have a couple questions. Sure. Um, is there a um, a spring start time, or, yes. or does the program just start in the fall? Nope. Uh, usually, it's uh, around the twentieth, twenty first of January that we start again. We call that our spring semester, and uh, applications for that will be open the first of August. So, if you decide you want to apply for spring, look for uh, applications in August to be open. You go ahead and apply, and uh, students start out taking different courses. I had a rotation schedule on there uh, that I'm not sure if I'm going in. 
in the right direction. Yes, here it is. You'll see this is for students entering the fall term. But if you were entering in the spring, you would come down this column. I have a different page for it, so it doesn't look exactly like this. But you would actually, if you were starting in the spring, take 210 uh, with Jason Kaltenbacher. It's the introduction to records management, really. And 283 with me. So I would get you in SharePoint there and in uh, preservation uh, program, digital repository. And then what you would do is uh, the next fall, you would take these courses, okay? And then you would go ahead and just the opposite. We've got it laid out for you on another page I didn't include here. But uh, yeah, it's quite possible to start in, uh, in January with us. I started in January. Um... Like Pat said, there's another course rotation. It looks like this, but it's for um, special people like us um, who start in the spring. So it's pretty easy to um, follow along with. I forgot that you're leaving us in December, right? No, I'm no, special. I know. <laughs> I was hoping you'd be on another year. Ken has been <laughs> working with me for quite a while now. I hate to see her go. Uh, okay, so do you have any other questions, Jenny? Uh, yes, hold on. I have a list here. Um, <laughs> hold on. Uh, so our classes uh, synchronous. I am no, I'm saying the, the term incorrectly or asynchronous. You're saying the term correctly. They're, okay. they're asynchronous. That means you don't have to be there. We don't have meetings like the one tonight unless there's a reason to do that. Uh, and it's never a requirement for a class. Uh, we have our uh, guest speakers, of course, that you have to dial in when they're speaking, but even that's recorded. So everything we have out for you, you could get in at your own time and you just meet those deadlines that are set uh, and you're fine. Uh, we get in and respond to your questions when we can you get in and do your assignments when you can uh, you will find though that we are uh, required uh, to respond to you within 24 hours so you're never going to go uh, more than a day without hearing from us and that would be the outside we're usually on every day a couple of times a day so uh, uh, you work at your own pace pretty much within the time frame that we set up for the course and I'm sorry, I do have one other question. Can, um, is there an internship opportunity? I think there's an internship class, correct? Yeah, I'll let Lisa talk about internship. Yeah, great, great question. Um, we do have a course um, related to internships and we actually have an internship database uh, on our website that has pre-approved internships that Mara students can apply for. I actually work with the internships students and they do some fantastic stuff. So if you want to, uh, you know, you know, co connect with me offline, um, there are some, if you, you know, we have pre-approved internships in the internship database, but if you have your own internship that you've sourced independently, uh, there's a little bit of a process to get that into our internship database or what we've been doing recently is just turning those internships into projects, special projects and that's another course that we can work on. But yes, we do value, uh, oh, it's, internships are so important and it looks awesome on your resume. And uh, so yes, uh, absolutely, we have as I mentioned, pre-approved internships, but if you want to work on something yourself or if you want to collaborate uh, on something with one of the professors uh, it, in terms of a research assistant, we're open. We're open to uh, all ideas around internships, but absolutely, Mara 294 is an absolute course that you can register for and uh, you would get credit for doing internships. And that one is only offered in the spring. So you'll want to plan your schedule too so that you can take that in the spring. Any other questions? Um, this is Sonia. Mm -hmm. um, so basically I have a bachelor's degree. But it's, okay. it's, it's in a different area. Um, for taking this program, does it have to be, you know, kind of like coming from the library or, or? No. Same area? 
No, that's the interesting part. Uh, records and information management is important for everybody. Uh, and you will see that uh, even those of us who teach in it have come in from different backgrounds. So some people come in from history. We've had paralegals. Uh, uh, I come from business. Uh, I, I don't know of very many that have actually had any coursework in records management before they joined the program. Some may work in the field, but a lot do not. So it's quite a diverse group. And no, it doesn't matter what your bachelor's is in, just as long as you have one. Okay. Pat, I can add to that. Absolutely support that. Um, people come from all sorts of backgrounds. And people, the, the, the follow-up question to that is usually, you know, uh, do I, you know, um, I, I, the appropriate word is I'm just a new graduate, I'm coming out of my bachelor's, and I'm, and or, you know, mid-career, and I'm looking for a career change, what is it? Yeah, that's kind of like, yeah, like, yeah. That's kind of like where I'm, to, I'm at. Yeah, career. like what's what's that demographic look like, right? And so I'm going to say it's 50-50 and it doesn't even, it, it makes no matter, no difference. It doesn't, everyone starts out equal whether, and every, every, every experience is, is so valued. So even if you come and you're career changing, um, as I did, I went back and did my PhD in my 40s. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, uh, we all have, we all bring different values to the course room and, and different experiences, whether you're a new grad, mid career change, you have experience, don't have experience. It's, it's all, it's all treated equally in the course room. Great. I think what you'll find is that um, even though you come from, with a different background, our, uh, assignments are so flexible that you can tailor a lot of them to your own uh, interests too. And I, I think that's pretty exciting. I've seen a lot of uh, wonderful uh, work come out of uh, Lisa's courses there, final assignments. When I get to uh, work with the students on their e-portfolio, I have a chance to see the assignments they're using as evidence. And uh, they're amazing and diverse. So there's, there's a lot of opportunity for everybody with different interests uh, to be able to concentrate more in those areas. And I think I'm just going to add real quick to that. Um, my undergrad is in sociology, criminology, and women and gender studies, so mm -hmm. not at all related. <laughs> um, but I, I'm already working in the field. I was working in the field when I um, joined the program. But um, just from being in classes with everybody that I've been in and met, um, actually, I think it really works to our advantage that we have a lot of different um, people in different careers and backgrounds coming in and it just adds a lot to the discussion the experience so um, it's not a problem at all coming in mm -hmm. one more question regarding the internships is there something that um, you have uh, virtual internships uh, yeah absolutely uh, just to follow up on, on Kenna's last uh, question, uh, point, I'm just reminded of a, uh, an assignment I graded and I gave permission just talking about diversity and we have a really su super, super student who said to me, I just want to code for your electronic records course. I don't want to do it. I want to, I want to code and I want to develop an app. <laughs> and I will like uh, give you my code as the final assignment and I will write about my experience and I was like oh <laughs> I was like okay I'm gonna just experiment with this she's a super smart amazing student anyway so I wasn't gonna question her integrity mm -hmm. um, but at the end of it she created this uh, amazing archives app that overlays geographical areas in her local community and pops up um, historical information on a certain corner. I was just so amazed. So I'm so glad uh, I took the risk and said, sure, uh, you don't, let's, let's, if you want to do this as your final paper, uh, for sure. So uh, just to, to, 
you know, you work with your instructors and you work with what you, uh, as Pat mentioned, sometimes she sees some submissions <laughs> as assignments that are a little out there. And that's just an example of one, but that student, you know, it just worked for her. And that was probably the best assignment that I've ever seen and and I, I'm glad I took that risk of being open-minded and saying hey yeah let's try this as an assignment and now that's opened my mind uh, for for uh, you know going forward in, in terms of do you need a traditional research paper maybe not but to answer your questions about virtual internships absolutely they are completely possible um, I want to share an experience with you with COVID uh, we've had a bunch of students who started I was working with started very vir very tech uh, place based virtual internships, and then we had to, you know, during COVID, we had to really quickly pivot and decide what are we going to do uh, in terms of those. In you know, I, I had one student who was working at the New York State Archives, another um, in, in San Francisco with the 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 one archives like they were very place-based organizations so in some situations that was great and there were some situations where they were already virtual and so that was great so we do have virtual internships so if you wanted to take that route absolutely and if you wanted to do a physical internship absolutely but we've had those people who were physical internships this term go go completely virtual. So that's how flexible our program is, is we were able to pivot and not only change those, those physical internships into, into physical within their organizations, or we found them other ones uh, that were uh, virtual kind of for the, the last few weeks of their internship so they can get their hours. So needless to say, physical, virtual, and pivoting. <laughs> we can do all of that. <laughs> Any other questions? I know we're uh, at our hour now, and I don't want to keep you longer than we promised, but uh, I think I'll end it there and say, if you have any other questions, send them along to us any one of us or bother all of us with your email. We would love to hear from you. Uh, and uh, we'll answer them for you. If necessary, uh, you'd like to speak to me one-on-one, -on -one, uh, we can set something up so that we can do that as well. Uh, yes, you can apply for fall or we'd love to see you in the spring, uh, whatever works for you. Uh, but uh, that's it for us for this evening. So thank you very much for attending. And uh, I hope to hear from you soon. <laughs>